Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to a bookish Q&A. I went to Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter to ask you guys for questions that are all literary related for me to answer, and I got a lot of good questions. So the first half of these questions are from Instagram, and the first question that I got was a very popular one, and it is, what is your favorite book of 2021 so far? And I have two, one I don't have a physical copy of and one I do have a physical copy of. So the one that I don't own yet is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This is a book that I picked up solely because of book talk. They kept on raving about it and gushing about how cute this romance book was. So I decided to pick it up on a whim from my library and fell absolutely in love with it. And it is a love story set in a university. It follows our main character, Olive, who has to fake date a very hot shot, very gruff, professor who is very aloof to the world and they strike up this fake dating scenario where they have to keep up this facade in front of the whole university and they slowly fall in love with one another and it has the grumpy and sunshine trope as well. It is just such a cute wholesome romance that I can see myself rereading because it is just so comforting and sweet and pure and it's not too steamy for those who aren't looking for very steamy romances. This one is the perfect one. It has all of my favorite tropes and it was just so well executed. And I heard that this story was actually originally Raylo fanfiction and while that's not my favorite ship in Star Wars, I thought it was really cute and I you can definitely see the similarities between Raylo and the couple in this book and it was just such a fantastic read. I gave it five stars. It was just utterly enjoyable. And the other book that took me completely by surprise because I picked it up on a whim was this stationery shop. This is a historical fiction novel that spans over a long course of time following our main character, Roya. She lives in Iran and then she has to eventually move to America and we follow her journey as she falls in love with Bahman in Iran and they fall into a whirlwind type of romance but things go sour and she eventually has to move to America away from Bahman. So we journey alongside Roya as she lives in Iran as a young woman and then she moves to America and creates a name for herself and creates a whole new life in this new country and it's just such an expansive beautifully written novel that completely took my breath away. The romance, the political intrigue, and the depth that we go into Roya's character was just awe-inspiring. It was just such a well-written book that I don't see a lot of people talking about, and I'm really glad that I picked it up on a whim because I saw my friends over at the Subtle Asian Book Club read it for one month, and I decided to read it alongside them, and it was just a fantastic read that I cannot gush about enough. It's just amazing and I listened to it on audiobook and I had to buy myself a copy because I really wanted to add it to my collection because it's one of my new favorite books of all time. The next question is, do you sometimes judge a book by its cover? And yes, of course I do. That's the reason why we have book covers in the first place. If people say that they don't judge a book by its cover, I feel like they're lightly lying because that's the whole point of a book cover. Like when I saw the stationery shop, I thought this is a beautiful cover. It probably has a beautiful story inside of it. Let me pick it up. That's how I usually am drawn to books in a bookstore and that's the reason why they create beautiful covers. It's for you to pick up and want to peruse and eventually buy. So of course I judge books by the cover. That's kind of the whole point of it. The next question is, what is your favorite genre of books? And I think I have to say historical fiction and contemporary romance novels. I love historical fiction because I love diving into a different time period. I love learning about different cultures and how society was different back then. And it's just, there are so many time periods that authors can explore and highlight the injustices during those times. And I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and people don't necessarily gravitate towards it, but whenever I hear about a historical fiction, I kind of like perk up and want to hear more about it because I know I'm probably going to love it. And as for contemporaries and romances, I just love reading about people's everyday lives. I love reading about the complexities of the human condition. I love reading about grief. I love reading about transitional moments in people's lives. And I also love reading about romances. I'm very much based in the real world when it comes to fiction. I'm not a big fan of fantasy or sci-fi. I usually don't pick those up in bookstores or when publishers tell me about books that are coming out. I usually stick with real life scenarios just because that's something that I really enjoy. and. I don't really know how to explain why I enjoy that, but fantasy worlds 
are much more intriguing to me in movies or in television rather than in novels for some reason. The next question is, how do you get out of a reading slump? One, don't push it. If you're in a reading slump, you probably just need a break and you can watch movies, you can listen to podcasts, you can watch television shows. There's always something else for you to consume. So don't push it if you're in a book slump and you're like forcing yourself to read because sometimes you just don't have the attention span or the passion to sit down and stare at thousands of words for hours on hand. Sometimes you need a break from that. Just let it kind of take its course. And if you do want to read, maybe pick up an audiobook because audiobooks for me are a great way to still dive into fictional worlds when I don't have the time or the attention span to sit down and read physically. The next question is, do you ever write down quotes from books or annotate your books? I do write down my favorite quotes from novels and I do annotate books, but I don't annotate books as often as you would think. I usually only annotate if I'm reading a classic or if I'm rereading a favorite book of mine that I want to have a conversation in the text with. So sometimes I will highlight the text or underline some of my favorite pieces of writing, but I don't do it for every single book that I read. And as for writing down my favorite quotes, I try and do it in my commonplace book. A commonplace book is something that I want to highlight in a future video of mine. It is essentially just a journal where you write down some of your favorite pieces of writing, whether that be lyrics, quotes from novels, quotes from articles, quotes that your friends said, it's just a place for you to put down your inspiration. So I don't do it as often for book quotes. I usually do it for quotes that I find online that I want to write in my commonplace book, but I do want to start writing down some of my favorite book quotes into my commonplace book because it would be a great way to look back at some of my favorite quotes from novels and to see what really inspires me from these stories that I read. But if you're interested in learning more about my commonplace book, and like what I have inside it, I would love to make a video of me like journaling in my commonplace book because I think it would be a great way to show off a different side of journaling. It's more like a hodgepodge of all your favorite things in one journal and it's not necessarily you journaling about your life every day, it's more like an inspiration journal, if that makes sense. Highly recommend looking up commonplace book. It's a great thing to read about because I found it on Tumblr and I really enjoyed the idea of it. The next question is, what is a book you'd say has deeply changed you and made you the person you are today? I would say all the books that I have read have made me the person I am today. They have all sculpted me as a reader and ignited my love for literature. Like I could say the Magic Treehouse series because that made me want to be a reader. I could say Diary of a Wimpy Kid because that was something I was obsessed with in middle school. I could say Twilight because that got me into young adult fiction. And I can also say Next Year in Havana because that was the first time I picked up a novel that had authentic Cuban representation. So I feel like there are so many books that can shape you as a person and I I think it just depends on the day. So I would say that all the books that I have read have changed me as a reader because whether it be a one-star read or a five-star read, it teaches you something about yourself. The one-star read it tells you, hey, maybe you don't like that genre. Maybe you don't like that type of writing style. Maybe you don't like those types of stories. And a five-star read can teach you a lot about yourself or it can inspire you to want to write your own book. So I feel like there are so many different answers that I can give. So I'm just going to say all the books that I have read. I got this a couple of times and someone asked, when you say a book is your favorite, does that imply that it's faultless or there can also be flaws in the story? I hate to break it to you, every single book, every single piece of media, every single person in this world has flaws. If I say something is my favorite movie, TV show, or book, I'm not saying it's free of flaws because that was never in the sentence. I said it was my favorite. I said that I deeply connected to it and I really enjoyed the story or I really enjoyed the characters but I never said that it was free of flaws because just because someone gushes about something that they love, it doesn't mean they think it's perfect because there are flaws in everything that we love. So assuming that someone thinks that their favorite book is faultless is kind of a reach because I'm sure we all have the critical thinking skills to understand that everything has its faults and there's not a perfect piece of media. So of course, all my favorite things have faults and I can speak about them in depth, but that kind of isn't the point of it. It's my favorite piece of media and we can understand that there are faults to a story, but we can still enjoy it entirely and that can really stick with us for a lifetime. I'm not here to say my favorite movie is Casablanca, here are all the faults with it. I'm saying my favorite movie is Casablanca, I really love it, it resonated with me, it changed me as a cinema lover, 
but there are of course flaws with it. To assume that everyone's favorite piece of media is faultless is just a reach in itself, so always keep that in mind. Nothing is perfect. The next question is, how many hours do you read a day? You will be lucky to find me reading for one hour a day. I primarily read on the weekends. I usually don't read during the work week anymore because I just do not have the time after work to sit down and read for hours upon hours. I also just don't have the attention span for that. We've established I do not have an attention span. So I usually read during the weekends. I try and read at least two hours each day. So primarily the way that I finish so many books throughout the year is by listening to audiobooks. When I do chores, when I fold laundry, sweep my room, do my skincare routine, I'm always listening to an audiobook. So that's how I'm able to read a lot of books because I have that audiobook on a nice two times speed and it's amazing. And it's not because I'm trying to rush through the book, it's just genuinely my brain runs at that speed, so I need the audiobook to match the speed of my internal monologue, so that's around two times speed. So that's how I get through so many audiobooks throughout the year. Now we're moving on to questions from YouTube. One is, what's a book that you picked up randomly and ended up loving? And I have three to show you. The first one that I want to highlight is The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. Of course, I've spoken about this so many times and how I found this in a Barnes & Nobles, saw the stunning cover that I did judge, and I thought, I need to get my hands on this book. The Memory Police, the title alone is just gripping and makes you want to learn what's going to happen. And I picked this up and it became my favorite book of 2019. And I'm really glad that I picked this up in Barnes and Nobles because if I didn't see this at the table, I probably wouldn't have heard of it or would have picked it up years from now. But I'm so glad that I did because it is a new favorite book of mine. Then we have The End of Loneliness by Benedict Wells. I picked this up because I was perusing Penguin Random House's website when they were telling me that they could send me a couple books from their stock and I saw this cover and absolutely fell in love with it and I thought it was just such an intriguing photograph so I decided to pick it up on a whim and this also became one of my favorite books. It is so sad, so tragic, and just so moving and I'm really glad that I discovered this on Penguin Random House's website because I've never seen this in a bookstore so I probably would have never picked it up if I wasn't looking at their website at that time. And then we have Writers and Lovers which I picked up on a whim on my birthday without looking at Goodreads or without looking at the synopsis. I just knew that so many people were raving about this book and they told me that people in their 20s and 30s should read it so I decided to pick it up on my birthday and I read it I think a month after and it's one of my favorite books of 2021. Amazing. I have really good luck with picking up books on a whim because I never do that and when I do they become favorite books of mine. The next question is do you always read the acknowledgments of books? And I do. I read every single acknowledgement from every single book that I read because they wrote it for a reason and I just love reading about the different people that impacted this author and I just love reading about their journey and usually they will put like a little author's note or they will put a little bit of information about the book and like how they came up with the idea in their acknowledgements so I like to read it to get a little bit more information from the author and because I'm mo I'm nosy. I'm just a nosy bitch, okay? <laughs> this one's just random that isn't really book related, but I always get this question. It is, how old are you? And I am 24. I am not in college. I got a lot of college questions for a book Q&A, which is interesting, but I'm not in college. I'm free from that, so... Don't ask me about college, it's one of my least favorite times of my life. And the last few questions I have are from Twitter, and this person asked two questions. So one is, which book gives you great comfort? And is there a book you loved but would never read again? So I have two books for the comfort question, and one is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I just think this book is so magical and warm and just cozy. It gives me cozy vibes. It reminds me of rainy days spent in cafes and it's just such a wonderful read that I just like distinctly remember reading. I remember the whole entire experience of it all and I just really enjoyed it and this book just gives me comfort when I think about it and I just want every single person to read it. It's about a magical time traveling cafe and people can time travel to any single time period in their life but they have to return back to the coffee shop before the coffee gets cold. It's amazing. Another book that gives me a lot of comfort is Bella Figura. I always mention this book on my channel but nobody has ever tagged me that they are reading this book so I will continue to mention it until one of you reads it. So Bella Figura is a memoir by Kamen Mohammadi about her time in Italy for a year. It chronicles the friendships that she made, the life lessons that she learned, and just her appreciation for Italian culture and I just found so much comfort in this and this is also a book that I distinctly remember reading. I 
remember spending hours reading this on the beach and I just remember the comfort that it gave me. It made me feel like I was in Italy and it made me just so inspired in life and made me excited for life. So this is a book that I always think about and it gives me a lot of comfort when I think about it. And the follow-up question was, is there a book that you've read that you would never read again? And all I have to say is, a little life. I would never read this book ever again. Sometimes I do want to look through the different passages that I highlighted because I did highlight this book and there are a couple of highlights in it but they're kind of like fading away but this is a book that I would never reread although I appreciate how much emotion it evoked from me. It's just a book that I would never want to put myself through again because it was just too heavy and just very traumatic in a way. Those are all the questions for this bookish q and I hope you enjoy listening to all the answers to those questions. Thank you to everyone who submitted questions on all my different social media channels. If you want to follow me anywhere else to participate in these bookish Q&As or to see some more content from me that you won't see on here, all my social media links will be down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you had a great time. Bye.